everyone's asking like, cause there's so much AI right now. They're like, aren't you scared? Are you worried about AI taking over like design and this and this and this? And I'm like, well, no, not really. Because people still, they crave that like a relationship and human interaction. Know that I actually care. Introducing The Vixen Voice, a podcast for ambitious women entrepreneurs ready to move into their feminine essence, live their truth, and unlock their full potential. I'm your host, April Roberts, and each week I'll be interviewing inspiring women who decided to take a leap of faith to pursue their dream. Women who believe that they were born for something bigger. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Vixen Voice. It is my pleasure to have my friend Candace Parker on today. Hi, Candace. <laughs> welcome. Hi. I love that we're running with the blues today. So super wow. fun. <laughs> Awesome. So Candace is the founder of design and branding studio, Big Bunny Creative. First of all, I love her name. Second of all, if you go follow her on Instagram, you are going to love the colors she puts out there. So Candace loves color. She's all about color. So do I. We kind of bonded over that and became friends. So I can't wait to dig in and hear the history of Big Bunny Creative and the name. And one other thing I find cool about Candace, and if you live in Houston or ever have, is she's actually a Houston native. So I lived there for 13 years. I'm in Nashville now, and we became friends. But very few people are Houston natives, even though it's the third or fourth largest city in the country now. So probably, Candace, we're going to dig in and see what it was like growing up in Houston and watching that change. So many cities in our country have just exploded over the last few years and life has changed. But first of all, let's dig in. One thing I love about you, Candace, is you're super smart, you're super strategic, and you also like to be a little extra, as you put it, right? So <laughs> if you ever see Candace at an event, she has an outfit on, like she is bringing it. And if you see her design work, she does the same thing in her work. So I really love that Candace has created this life with her life partner and her two kids where they are just very real. They are living life and they are loving it. And Candace, I know this wasn't always your story. So thanks for joining us today to share that story with us. I think the listeners are going to find you as fascinating, colorful and creative as I do. So welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was so nice. Like I'm going to listen to that before I go to bed every night. <laughs> Oh, good. We'll send you a clip. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> we will cut you that clip. But I'm, I'm serious. You know, I, I'm so blessed to have so many wonderful women in my life that thus far, we've gotten to just interview people I know. And as you know, I shared with you, the purpose of this podcast is really to share our stories with women out there who are maybe searching for their story, or maybe they're striving for their story, and they feel alone at this moment, or they're going through challenges, or celebrating huge wins. So I really like to encourage everyone listening as Candace shares her story, you might not have gone through being a single mom like she did or different things, but we can all find inspiration and comfort when we really get to know each other and what we've been through. So Candace, we'll kind of start with your journey. Share with us. You've been designing for a long time, but not always in your own business. So let's start with maybe how you started out. Okay, cool. Well, so I went to college right after high school, like pretty normal. I was like, I'm going to do marketing and went through, did all that, graduated, got a job. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like marketing is not what I thought it was going to be. I was like wanting this vibrant, creative career and like art and travel and color. Right. And it was translating more to sales. And I was like, Ugh. like <laughs> this sucks. I don't want to do sales. I'm not a salesperson. Like where's the creativity? Like, I don't want to just like do like focus on like one thing and like sell it to people. I just felt like it was cringy. And so after working for about a year in 2008, so I got laid off just like, you know, half of Houston, 
And so I decided to go back to school to the Art Institute and get a quick degree in graphic design. So I was finding, you know, even though I was creative, you know, I didn't have that technical skill set. So it's like I had Adobe, I had these things and I was creative, but it was like learning to do things quickly on the computer, learning about color, learning about like, not that it's like just pretty, like there's actual like science that goes into like color and layout and all these things. So went to the Art Institute, graduated from there and when I graduated, I was pregnant with my son, Dylan. So took some time off after I had him. Luckily, I was able to live with my parents. And so I didn't really have to get a job right away and pay for things. I was just freelancing to kind of get through this time when he was like a newborn. And from there, I learned a little bit about owning my own business then because I was literally just thrown into like freelancing, had no idea what I was doing. And I had an Etsy shop. And so I learned how to do like accounting and taxes and learn how to charge things and cover your costs and like charge for time. And then I got to like do the fun creative stuff too. So in that shop, I was doing like invitations and posters and just stuff that people needed for parties and events and fun stuff like that. From there... I got a job at Igloo, which is the cooler company (laughs) because they're based out in like West of Houston. And so that was super cool for me. Like I gained so much experience, so much knowledge, had an awesome boss. And, you know, one of the people that was my coworker is still one of my best friends. So it was a great experience, but it was just kind of like too corporate, (laughs) you know, it's like, when I would try and be creative and like do something really cool, it was always just kind of like shut down and too much red tape and just not it for me. So left Mm -hmm. Igloo, freelanced for a while and then ended up at another agency where I learned all about promotional products, which is what I do now and kind of decided to once I had gained enough experience there, go out on my own and marry the two together. So now I have my own business where I create beautiful designs for branding, promotional products, apparel, print, a lot of things to do with like events and just all over company branding. And I love it. So that's how I got here. (laughs) That's amazing. So we're definitely going to dig in deeper. (laughs) No, but one thing I heard is I'm curious at what age did you have this aha that it was too corporate for you at Igloo? Okay. So I was, oh my gosh, I was in my twenties. How long had you been working like in a corporate environment when you had that? So I had worked there for three, a little over three years, whenever I had officially decided like, this is not for me. I don't see myself staying here my whole life because a lot of employees at Igloo, like it's a great company. And so a lot of people stay there literally their whole freaking lives. Like I was just like, I can't be one of these people. Like I'm not happy enough. Like it was a great steady job. I paid everything. It was closed. It had good like culture, but just wasn't for me. It wasn't like fulfilling everything I needed. And so in different circumstances, you know, I just was like, all right, well, leave, <laughs> find something yeah. else that fits a little bit better. But I love it. I asked because I was actually 27 when I had that same aha at my first big firm that was like huge 800 lawyers, right? And So what I'm curious about is, do some of us have that earlier? Because I felt I had it very young in life. And I kind of knew that wasn't the route for me because I got out of law school at 25, right? So I was only two years into my career. Or is it just that some of us aren't cut out for corporate and like, and we realize quickly and other people are totally fine with it? Like, I'm just always curious when people have this aha moment, because I'm curious how you feel about it, because I feel very blessed that I had that aha moment very early in my career, right? I'm not saying it made life easy, but I'm happy that I had it. So I'm curious how you feel about that. Yeah. I mean, I think it just is... Because for me, like at that time, there was a lot of other things going on. So it wasn't just work. It was 
relationships. It was my son in school and like all these things that were combining to make me feel like I have to make a change. You know, like it wasn't like my relationship was trash. I, I, you know, wasn't happy where I was at in, in my career. I wanted more. And then, you know, my son was, um, just starting school and he had to go to speech therapy and I was like learning all this stuff and he was, you know, getting kicked out of daycare for biting. And I didn't know that was like a communication thing. I was like, I don't know what to do. Like tell him no, you know, like I had no idea. So it's like, there's all these things that add up. It's not only just, um, you know, just your career, I think. And so yeah. like some people, it does happen later or earlier just because of what's going on and like, what might be, you know, the major push it might be unhappy for years someplace. And then finally something clicks and you're like, screw this, like, and you have to make a change in order to like stay sane. Right. So. No, I think that's interesting and insightful because I was getting married when I had this aha. So I do think it's like when other people are involved in your lives and you have to start juggling priorities, right? And then I interviewed another guest, Becky Kohlberg, and she said, in self-acceptance, there's this gap of your ideal self and like where you are. And what she started asking herself is, what am I willing to give up to get there? So I think, you know, when we have kids, when we have a significant other, we have to start asking ourselves like, okay, what am I willing to give up like to make (laughs) this work? So it's really interesting. You have shared with me before that two pivotal moments in your life One was deciding to raise your son by yourself, and the second was starting a business. So can we kind of dig in? Do you mind sharing the story about how you came to that decision to raise your son yourself? Because I've talked to so many women that came to this crossroads and made different decisions, right? So I'd love it if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, of course. I'm a pretty open book. When it came to Dylan, honestly, the choice was kind of made for me. I didn't have like a moment where I was like, this is what I'm going to do. It was mostly just, I just had to basically like step up and do it. I had no choice, but that was like the best thing that's ever happened to me. And so I think like all of the things that I've learned from that and like from him and from being a single mom and learning how people treat single moms and, you know, it teaches you a lot just about literally everything. So it's like, not just about like raising a kid by yourself, but about every other aspect in life and like what's important to you changes and who your friends are change because it's like, okay, well, I'm not a club rat anymore. So obviously if, if my friendship's important to you, then like we'll still be friends, even though like I'm pregnant and I can't even walk outside because it's 110 degrees. So do you want to come <laughs> sit on the couch with me or do you only want to go, you know, to bottomless brunch? So I think that's kind of, I didn't make the decision to do it with Dylan by myself necessarily, but I'm so glad that I did and kind of just, it made me like a a better person, a stronger person. And then uh, starting my own business as a pivotal moment was kind of one of those things again, like where it was all things colliding in the universe where everything just aligned and it was time. Cause it's like, I had not been happy at this agency for a while and just kind of like, not really feeling it. My growth wasn't like excelling like I wanted it to. And I wasn't feeling it, but I just, you know, you stay someplace because it's like, okay, it's stable. It's not terrible. Then do I have to like start over someplace? I've been here for a while, whatever. And like you make these excuses for yourself, but it all just kind of happens in a way where, okay, like I had kind of thought about moving. I I was living in a house in Katy at the time, which is West of Houston, like a suburb being single. Like that sucks. Like, (laughs) (laughs) like there's literally nothing to do. It's like all families, like going to the park, like even making mom friends is hard because they're all like, Oh yeah, my husband and this and that. And then they go home and they don't want to like necessarily just hang out with me and my kids. So out in Katy, I was kind of like, I want to move out in inside the loop, which in Houston means like inside the main city area where like all the restaurants and shops and people and life and events and stuff happen. And so 
I wasn't really fulfilled at work, wanted to move because I wasn't feeling it like relationship wise. Like I, I did want, you know, a significant other and it just like, wasn't happening. Like no offense to Katie, but it just like, wasn't it for me (laughs) out there. And so when all of those things aligned, it was just kind of like, I think it's time, right? Like maybe I should just do this. Like it happened once before at Igloo. I kind of did my own thing. Now it's happening again. And like, I'm still not happy. And it was, it was just like this internal struggle with like also wanting to be there more for Dylan because I wouldn't call it like mom guilt. Like I used to call it that, but it was more just like, I wanted to be able to go pick him up from school and not have him have to go to after school care, you know? And then, okay, I want to go to the gym. Well, so I'm taking him from daycare to the gym to drop him off at daycare. And then what we get to hang out for 30 minutes. Like, no, I want to pick him up when he gets out of school at like two thirty, three o'clock. I want to go home and spend time with him. I can work in the evenings. I'm like, this is why COVID was actually a blessing. Cause people were like, Oh, you can work past five. You can work from your own house. Like (laughs) this is so crazy. You know, it was like a concept that like, I don't want to say I was like ahead of the times, but I was just like, why isn't this a norm, especially for someone like me who has like other priorities. Like I want to be able to say my son's sick. I'm going to stay home with him because I want to be there for him versus having to get my mom to watch him so that I can go sit in an office full of assholes, you know, like what's the purpose of this? So it was kind of just like all this brewing in me when I finally decided I'm going to start my own business. I've done this for a while. Like I had freelanced for eight years. I think it was then by the time, you know, so it's like, I kind of know what I'm doing. I have a small client base. I have friends that will vouch for me. So I just did it, just left, did it full blown. And that's it. Yeah. I love it. So did you move at the same time you were starting your new business? Yeah. 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 So I moved in July and uh, started my business in October. So I I had, you know, done the logistics of like creating the, the business name and the logo, the website. Like I'd started kind of working on that in my own time. And then I had already had that. Like I had a business before it was called the design mama, like super original, right? Cause I was a designer and a mama. So I had it. And so I was really just transferring this old business that I was not going to do anymore. You know, I was like, that's really like kind of lame and also kind of limiting me because everyone thinks I'm just designing for other moms and not mm-hmm. men or corporate or anything like that. And it was kind of like, that was what I was doing it was like other mom businesses and invitations and stuff. And I was like, I don't want to do freaking invitations for the rest of my life. Like I have all these talents. Like I want to do more. So all I really did was change the name and still mm-hmm. offer the same services, but just kind of like, I hate the word pivot because everyone started using it and it's really annoying, but I, that's what I did. I just kind of like maneuvered, pivoted how I was marketing myself and just made it kind of like more fun and out there and recognizable and just wanted to grow. I love it. And it's a super fun brand. So I want to get back to Big Buddy Creative. However, you said a lot of deep stuff and kind of glossed (laughs) over. So I'd love to go deep. So because that's what we do on the Vixen Voice. You mentioned that raising Dylan by yourself was the best thing that's ever happened to me. And you talked about a lot of lessons you learned. But do you have like one or two concrete lessons or ways that this made you a better person, as you said? Yeah, I think it raised my standards quite a bit. I think it just goes with being young. Like you just kind of hang out with whoever you go. Like, yeah, I'll go to the pool party. Like who lives here? You know, you just kind of go with the flow and don't really pay attention to that kind of stuff. But really like around, I guess, 25, I had him when I was 24. That's like kind of when you start to kind of have to grow up and be like, oh, like I'm not just like working here to make cash to pay rent. like. I'm needing to like start to adult. So just raising my standards in terms of friendships and relationships, like going out and staying up all night and drinking a ton of alcohol. And like, you know, 
I am a mom. So I, I don't get to sleep in the whole next day or go to brunch the next day. Like I have to actually make it home and pay my babysitter or, you know, pick him up from my parents' house and spend the whole next day with him. Like they don't sleep in, kids don't sleep in and he wants to rage, you know, like he wants to go play (laughs) and he wants to like do stuff and have me watch him like jump on the trampoline, you know, it's like, there's no resting. So you kind of just like change how you operate and like what's important and you eliminate a lot of people in your life. Once you realize like, okay, like the frivolous things, like this is real life. This is what I'm focused on. And if someone still wants to be with me and be my friend and support me or be in a relationship with me, even though like they are automatically second place, then, you know, that speaks a lot about someone. So kind of learned a lot that way. And then also just like about myself and like what I wanted out of life. And I kind of touched on that before, like, do I want to go to work and be in the office and in traffic all day and then go to the gym or go, if I have a life, like just abandon my kids and like, well, every now and then, like, that's not necessarily the case, but it was like a daily thing, like having to be in my car in Houston traffic, and I think now it's it's different because of COVID, which was a blessing in disguise in many ways, I think. But because people can take a couple of days off a week and work from home and like spend more time being more like intentional with their time, I guess, is is what it, it taught me because they grow up so fast. And like, that's so lame. Like everyone says that, but it's true. Like Dylan's almost 12 years old and, you know, it's like, okay, he's like a full human, like a full grown man. And he's a young man now. And I hate thinking about like all the time that I spent like at these jobs that were just trash. They weren't trash. They taught me a lot, but you know, inside it's like, that wasn't my forever, but he is. And so it's like, I feel like I wasted a lot of time. And so that kind of like was the other lesson was just to just go for it and do it. Like if it's not making you happy, like straight up, just leave. Don't give it any energy it's time to move on. It's not worth it. So I'm sure people are listening, especially women saying, yeah, I don't want to sit on the traffic either. I'd love to spend more time with my kids. Yeah, I don't want to go sit in the office with all these assholes, as you said. But I know you're just, uh, this is what I love about Candace. I told you she's extra. She's going to be real. So, you know, they're sitting here going, "Uh uh-huh, uh-huh, but how do I do this? So obviously, you know, I know a passion of yours is to really mentor and help women finding themselves in that situation. Like, hey, don't get stuck stuck in that job that's just okay and paying the bills, right? So are there any tips you can give there or maybe some insight into like, what gave you the fortitude to move forward? I know everybody setting up their business is different. But what were maybe some of the emotional things you had to work on or your mindset or something that maybe someone listening in the same position could latch on to? Yeah, I mean, there's so much and I love that you'll take it to the next step. I feel like I, I talk about like, just do it all the time, but then it, it is kind of like this blanket statement where it's like, okay, well, what do I, how do I do that or whatever? Because I know the situation's different. Like I'm really lucky because I have my parents to lean on for literally everything. So mm-hmm. if I ever need help financially or with my kids or just like someone to, to call or to have happy hour with, like I have them. But it's a community that you have to to find. Yeah. So, you know, like if you want to make a change, but you're not sure how finding other women or, you know, it doesn't have to be women. It could be men too, but it's just so different. I think for women starting out, if they are wanting to start a business, so like even with capital and stuff like that, like you, it's just mm-hmm. so wildly different, but finding a community of people that you can learn from that will support you and help you that you can ask questions to without feeling like you're stupid, you know, because everyone starts somewhere. And so I think like finding whether it's on Instagram or in real life, finding, you know, a a community of, of women that have been there or that are going through the same thing that can give you that like emotional support. And then also that you can just learn from like, watching them grow their businesses and saying like, Hey, do you have an account? Are you doing this yourself? Or what, what software do you use? And things like that, that like starting out, you just really wouldn't know. And 
Instagram, I guess, is kind of double edged because that would also be my other tip is to just not compare yourself because yeah. like people go on Instagram to escape reality and they're everyone's showing their highlight reels and some people will be like, Oh, like highlight reel, but like, this is real life, but that's still not even real life. Like it's really freaking hard sometimes. And Mm -hmm. who knows if these people are even being truthful. Okay. Like you don't know them. You don't see their bank accounts. Like they could be fully in debt and you would never know. Yeah. So I think just not comparing yourself and just like celebrating yourself and your small goals and like these little things. I started in 2019, which the pandemic started in. Right, so I started October of 2019 and the pandemic started in what? March, April of 2020. So I had only like these few months of like total bliss where I was like, this is amazing before like everything shut down and they were like, and no, it's not. <laughs> so it's not always like this great. Like I'm a a fabulous business owner and I, I make my own schedule and things like that. But yeah, I think there's so much that people don't see that goes on behind the scenes. That's really hard and confusing. I mean, so I, I'm at like three, almost four years in business right now. And I still have things where I'm like, I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. And I struggle and it's, it's hard for me. And, you know, I'm, I'm good at what I'm good at, but then it, it's always something. Right. And so it's just, and like, as you grow, obviously like your if the business is going to grow, that's the goal. Mm-hmm. Right. So you're going to have new challenges. And so I think really just, you, you can't compare to anyone, even if you're doing the same exact thing, you've been in business the same exact time. Like you don't have the same past. You don't have the same network and connections. You don't have the same path in life. And like, you might not even have the same goals. Like my goal is not to be filthy rich. It's to have time freedom and spend time with my, my kids and my family and to like be able to just chill out and like go to Galveston. I don't need to go to the Bahamas. It'd be cool. So I think just like being true to yourself and like not getting kind of lost in these other like yeah narratives is, is really important too. But yeah, tips are just like find your community, ask questions. Don't be scared to ask questions. Find like mm-hmm. people that are willing to mentor you and don't compare to others and just to be really true to yourself and like go back to that. I always do like going back to my why posts on Instagram, because it's like, you can get lost and you kind of like wander and you're, you're, you're so busy. And then you're like, why the hell am I even doing this? Like, why am I trying to kill myself for these, these other people that need these orders? Like their urgency is, you know, what's that thing where it's like, you know what I'm saying? Um, Lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Yes. Okay. That's what I was trying to say. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) So yeah, I mean, and that's, that's essentially like, you know, you have to go back and be like, why am I doing this? And then remind yourself and then you can kind of like realign. And I think that's, that's really important too. Well, and I think it's an ongoing process. Like, thank you. I love this idea of finding a community, right? And then not being afraid to ask questions. Because one thing that shocks me is, you know, I, I've been in business for 15 years. I, I built three companies, sold two of them. I'm on the third one. And and I'm, I'm a nerd about this stuff. I love it. And I love helping people. And so, you know, a friend will be like, oh, this is going on. I'm like, okay, let's hop on a Zoom call. I'll talk you through. Oh, my gosh, I don't want to take your time. I, like, people don't even want help when you offer it. It's amazing to me because to me, it's like easy. So I'm happy. You know, I say it's easy because my own business, not everything's easy, right? But when someone's talking to me about their business, I can see it clearer. So sometimes hearing from another party, like I chat with my other business owner girlfriends all the time when I'm like, hey, I have this, like, can you help me think it through, right? But I'm talking to someone I trust to help me think it through. Because other people see your problems from a different angle, and it can really broaden the way you visualize it, because it really is true. Sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees, right? And sometimes I was chatting with a girlfriend the other day, and she has a phenomenal business, and she's newly pregnant for the first time. And, you know, she was sharing mommy brains hitting her. And she's like, I don't know what to do with this. And I was like, 
oh, do this. And she was like, oh, my gosh, you're so right. I needed to talk to you. That's so simple, right? And I mean, it was just because I'm seeing it from a different angle. So, you know, I'd love to encourage if someone offers to help you say yes. Guess what? If you say no, that's like saying no to abundance, the universe, God, whatever you believe in, and it's not going to keep knocking, right? So I love Candace. I know you're really open with helping other women and other business owners because you've been there, done that. And I feel the same way. So finding the community, asking questions and accepting help, I think that's so critical. And one thing I would add is taking action to move forward doesn't mean you walk in and quit the next day. It might be saying, okay, let me save up six months worth of income so I can go give notice. As you said, everybody's in a different position, right? But it's starting to get that plan in place so you have the light at the end of the tunnel. So every day when you show up and you're like, why am I here? And they're like, oh yeah, I'm here because I'm going there, right? And I love your get back to my why. You know, at Vixen, we have like our five pillars, especially for new entrepreneurs and and experienced entrepreneurs just settling in. And a big part of it is creating that compelling vision for your business, which is what's your purpose? Who do you serve? What are your core values? And what's your big goal, right? And so I always encourage our clients and anyone out there, have these things. And when you're having that tough day, you go look at them. It becomes like your North Star. And that's what you're sharing with your why, right? Why am I doing this? And another thing I heard is, why does everyone need everything last minute? That's why putting boundaries into your business and understanding how you operate is so important. And look, we all want to help everyone and we all say yes, well, we should say no. But, you know, if you have this policy in place, like, hey, I need an order by this time to get it here, then you can choose if you want to bend on that. So I think you just brought up so many different things that play into success, which also equals helping us keep our sanity, keep our energy and keep our joy. And what I also loved is pointing on you have different goals than other people, right? Some people are super money driven and you're driven to spend time with your family and have freedom. So I love that. Thank you for reminding everyone that we are all different and we're all here for a different purpose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think all the stories that we kind of see everyone else's success around can kind of blur that vision and I think like as long as you're passionate about what you're doing, like obviously why would you want to start a business with something you hate? Maybe some people do if it makes money or whatever their, their, their goal is. Right. But if it's your passion and you're, you love it, then it'll all just kind of like, it sounds not as like encouraging. Cause like, obviously if you're stuck somewhere, like hearing that it'll all fall into place is really annoying. Cause you're like, when, yeah. <laughs> when is it going to fall into place? Can you please give me a date then? Uh, but it, it, it does, right? Like whether it's how you yeah. saw it in your mind or not, you know, like I, I never really saw myself being in a relationship with someone and having more kids, but here I am and I'm very happy. So I think, being flexible and and not just, you know, focus on your goals, but just one step at a time and just make sure you're happy every step of the way. Yeah. One thing I like to, it always comes up for me and I like to share is trust the process, right? Like Mm -hmm. it it might be frustrating at the moment. It's not happening. (laughs) And I agree with you. You have to trust the process, but you also have to take steps to put things in place. So Mm -hmm. you, you have to do both because we're not in control of the timing of when things happen. And I think that's a misnomer. So many people have, Hey, if I get my ducks in the row, if I plan, if I do everything, like I can make this happen. And I just, it's rare that you're able to make something happen. And if you do, you usually, in my experience, receive to a lower level. Whereas if you kind of flow with it, like you're not limiting what's coming your way. Does that make sense? Like you said, you wouldn't have pictured yourself in a relationship having more kids. And now, even though you're sleep deprived, probably looking backwards, you couldn't imagine your life without it, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. But I think everything that happens at the perfect time, whether you like, it gets frustrating. Mm-hmm. Like I'm impatient. Right. And mm-hmm. I had wanted to just quit. Right. Like on the spot so many times. Cause I was like, screw this. 
but didn't, you know, I would have to go to like the parking lot and talk to my dad on the phone and be like, I hate it here. But just like being patient and kind of like waiting for those, those moments, I think, and it all just happens what it's supposed to. And maybe it's not like you have this crazy vision. Maybe that's not your path. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, maybe sometimes you're not the person yet who can step into that vision because sometimes we have to grow into our vision, right? So (laughs) I always try to focus on like, growing myself and working on myself when things aren't working. Like, okay, what can I do to like become this person, right? Or become the person I want to be and trust. So earlier, you kind of touched on how people treated you as a single mom. Can we go there a little bit? Because I've talked to many women about their decisions about having children, not having children. And you know, this, I'm a 47 year old woman with no children. And people still ask me, Oh, do you want to have kids? And I'm like, seriously, are we having this conversation? <laughs> like, This is crazy. <laughs> like, it's just amazing to me how everyone wants to beat this drum. I don't understand how in 2023, we as women cannot honor each other's decisions, no matter what they are, right? So, yeah. and show up in support. And you know what, I, I say that, but I have friends, you know, I have friends who are moms, just like you, and we make it work. And we're friends. And like, then so so it's not, you know, generally out there. But if you wouldn't mind just sharing some of maybe the struggles or challenges you had and then how you overcame them and how you grew as a person from being a single mom and maybe feeling, you know, a little bit judged or lonely or outside of the box, right? Yeah, yeah. So many things were a struggle, but making decisions on my own because typically there's two parents and, you know, oh, Dylan... If he, if he was sick or I'm like, well, I don't know. Do I take him up? Do I give him this medicine? Like all of these little decisions as like a new parent are really stressful. None of my friends had kids. So I had no one really to call other than my own mom. And, but it, it was all on me. Right. So it's so stressful to be the only person responsible for this human being and making all the decisions. So like I said earlier, like he had to do uh, speech therapy and all of these things. I'm like, am I doing the right thing? Like this testing, is it even the right one? I don't know. And so all of that is just, was just really hard to deal with, but you know, you don't have a choice, right? You do what you think is best. Do your research, ask people, and then just being in corporate was hard because if I'm the only parent, I'm the one who has to leave work every single time he's sick or every single time he's Mm -hmm. getting in trouble, (laughs) which I make it sound like it was really, well, it was kind of often, but you know, like he struggled a little bit. And so in turn, like I had no one else to help me go pick him up or lean on, or can you stay home because I have a major deadline at work. And then it like creates resentment because your coworkers don't have kids and they they want to go home too, you know, and it's not like I'm going home to party or to sit in the bathtub and relax. You know, I'm, I'm going home to take care of him and it's, it's stressful and it sucks, but they see it as not being at work. So you kind of get judged Mm -hmm. in that sense. And then also it's stressful whether you're at work and you're away from your, your kid, you're stressed. But if you're with your kid and you're away from work, you're still stressed <laughs> because mm-hmm. like, okay, like I'm, tr- I'm trying to grow in my career and you just keep hitting these like roadblocks where it's like, okay, you know, okay. He's been healthy for a month. I haven't had to leave for a month and so excited. And then it's like, oh, he has the flu or what, well, you know, it's like all these things. You just kind yeah. of like feel like you can't win and you have no help. I did. My, my mom, my dad, my sister helped me a lot with Mm -hmm. helping watch him so that I could go into work and stuff like that. But it's still not ideal. And then just, you know, kind of like I mentioned before, it's like, it was hard to make friends because while I was Mm -hmm. like in the suburbs where there are a lot of moms, not a lot of them were Mm -hmm. single or understood my situation. Like no one asked. So they just thought, oh, like you're a single mom. I guess you just had a one night stand or something. Like everyone just kind of assumed, Mm -hmm. right? 
So, and when no one would ask, they wouldn't really want to like be close to me or be friends with me like that. I did have a lot of good close mom friends that I ended up, not a lot, I wouldn't say maybe two or three, (laughs) but you know, it wasn't like people were flocking to like hang out and, you know, Mm -hmm. even just come over for like little play dates and stuff. I found it really hard to make those connections just because it wasn't really like the norm for the suburbs. It was kind of like everyone would assume you had a husband or like, you know, if you're out, well, what does your husband do? And I'd be like, well, I don't have one. (laughs) Sorry. You know, and and it's not anyone's fault, like to assume that someone who lives in the suburbs with a kid would have not have a husband, but it's just kind of like, it gives you like that feeling, right. Where it's like not anyone's fault for asking or assuming, but it's Mm -hmm. annoying. Yeah, it's like, how many times do I have to deal with this situation? Yeah, and like you said, like it's it's modern times. Like people have yeah. kids by themselves without even having any kind of situation, right? Like you can choose to do that. Like you can literally yeah. have a sperm donor. So why is it so strange? I don't know. So yeah, like those kinds of things are, are frustrating. And I think just at a humane level, regardless of what you think of the situation, having compassion for another human being is huge, right? And like you said, it it was like people didn't try to understand your situation, which was probably the most frustrating because you kind of carried on to conversation. But when you were sharing the stress of making decisions as the solo parent and then second guessing yourself, I mean, that hits your confidence in all areas, right? And I'm sure you're carrying that weight around. Like you said, you're stressed at work, you're stressed at home, right? Yeah. And so, no, I I thank you for sharing that because I think now in the new hybrid work environment, everyone's trying to readjust as well. Like kids are at home, kids are doing things. So the the stress shows up in different ways, right? And Mm -hmm. everyone's trying to do their best and figure things out. So I think it's a super valuable conversation to remember not to make excuses for people or let them get away with things, but to be compassionate about people and really try to understand their situation instead of making assumptions, which I think is a good rule of thumb in any part of life, right? Yeah. Yeah. We talk about, I have a framework for having difficult conversations and it's like, you never want to go in with assumptions because you don't know what the other person is carrying around. So I thank you for sharing all of that. I know your life is a lot different today. So I I hope that was okay to go back and revisit. Yeah, of course, of course. It's real life. So it happens, you know, and it, and it's just, you know, and I knew, I knew it wasn't just me either. Right. Like there's, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't think anyone was t- intentionally like trying to be an asshole or trying to make me feel bad, but it's like, yeah. you know, those things happen. And that's part of being a single parent is just stress all around. <laughs> It's so rewarding though, because then it's literally, you know, it's all yours. So when you have like this gentleman who's so caring and he's grown into this like amazing young man, big brother person, Mm -hmm. then I'm like, well, yeah, I did that, you know? So it's rewarding at the same time, but it's just people kind of brush off single mom as like a just a term. And it's like, no, like there's so much more than that. (laughs) Like it's not just like being single in terms of the relationship aspect. It's single as in like everything is done by yourself. So yeah. Yeah. And the decision-making and not having someone to discuss with. And, you know, as you were sharing that, I was thinking, gosh, how important would a community be, right? Like, again, as women, if we started coming together and supporting each other in this like situation, because just like your advice about, you know, going into business and finding a community, it's so important to find other women in a similar situation, be it that you're a single mom, you know, some people are listening, and they are the mom in a relationship in the suburbs, but maybe they're bored because they miss working and they're staying home, right? (laughs) Or maybe you're thinking about starting a business or maybe you're in corporate America and you're feeling guilty that you're not at home in the suburbs with your kids. So everybody has different situations. And I think what's important is to 
find the safe place to find the safe people that you can have these conversations with. Mm -hmm. And one thing I always like to emphasize to women is we know the answers. As women, we are amazing creatures. I really think we're God's greatest creation. And I don't just say that. I have a spiritual teacher who tells me that, and he's a man, by the way. (laughs) So I just think that we know the answers. Sometimes we just need that sounding board or be able to speak out loud or have someone hold that space for us where we can be vulnerable and real and raw. And so it's so important to find that. So again, I really thank you for being real today with us and sharing your story. I'm sure that plenty of people have found inspiration. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you had a great aha moment or something you want to share about your journey, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or LinkedIn. You can find Candace and Big Bunny Creative. Share with her your great moments. And if you go to YouTube, there's a short form of this video where we'd love love to hear your comments, right? Again, by you sharing, you can impact other women's lives. And I'm sure Candace is going to be reading all the feedback and loving it as well. So thank you so much. So Candace, wow, thank you for today. We had a deep conversation. Before we leave, I do want to talk about Big Bunny Creative because I love what you've created. I love yeah. how colorful it is, how you serve your clients, and I love the name. So let's just start with the name. Where did Big Bunny Creative come from? So Bunny is actually a cat. <laughs> so <laughs> we, um, my, I think I was three, probably. My parents yeah. got a kitten for my sister and I for Easter. And so, of course, like we're little kids. They're like, what do you want to name it? And we're like, Bunny. So it doesn't really make sense, but his name was Bunny. He was like this giant Maine Coon, fluffy, mm-hmm. like, I mean, I'm talking massive cat. And he was an outdoor cat. He was awesome. He like, you know, would roam the neighborhood. Like, I feel like he just had like this air about him that was like so respected. He had one eye because he got in like fights with other cats and birds and got hit by a car and like still was managing to stay alive. (laughs) And he's, he was alive. I mean, I think he was like 12 maybe when he finally passed away, but he was with me for my whole childhood and we always still talked about him and stuff. So whenever I was like, I'm going to make, you know, a new name for my business, I kind of wanted it to feel like really personal, but still fun. And I kind of just did like a, a brain dump of all these like words and things and everything that was like significant that kept, you know, coming up in my life. And that was one of them. And I was like, well, you know, that could be fun. And then I could have a mascot. And then it just kind of like took off from there. And then, you know, making different names. And I was like, you know what? Fitz is Big Bunny because he was big. His personality was big. And I feel like being big is not necessarily so like you should want to do whatever you want. Like be big and be extra and be pink and like call your company whatever you want. Make it the colors that you want because it's yours. It's not, it's not someone else's. Like if you're trying to please your clients all the time with like, you know, your, your business name Mm -hmm. and all this stuff, then like you're not, it's, you're not doing it for yourself, you know? And I think people see that they can sense it, you know, and it's like, it's just really authentic and fun. And so that's kind of what I landed on and yeah, it's, it's been fun. I thought about making the mascot a cat, but I was like, that's going to be really confusing. (laughs) (laughs) So I just, I just went with the actual bunny and, but the story lets him, my little kitty kind of live on. Yeah. (laughs) I love that. I actually did not know that backstory. So thank you so much. That's super cool. And also because he was a big tough cat and went through a lot, that's kind of like owning a business, right? So (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, it just shows like there can be two sides. You can be like this big mean cat, but like when he would come inside Mm -hmm. and the end of the day, he would like snuggle and do, you know, like how they make biscuits. And so it's like, he's, he's lovable, but he's badass and he's cool and all these things. So you can be more than one, more than one thing I think is, I don't want to go too deep with it. I mean, he's a cat, but you know, (laughs) 
<laughs> no, I love the symbolicism. Yeah. So, and you help other companies, other people with their branding, correct? So you'll go through yeah. this creative process. I love that. So you can see all of the thought that Candace put into her own company. And then your colors are this bright, vivid pink and like kind of a tealish blue. It's like a light blue. So is there significance behind the colors? Not really. I mean, I've always <laughs> loved pink. Like I just, you know, yeah. all this Barbie stuff coming out. I'm like just thriving on it because I've just like loved pink and loved Barbie and like the, this, you know, that it symbolizes being girly and like kind of just like embracing that instead of like muting yourself down, like you should just go ahead and be vibrant, you know? And I, I added like this bright yellow to my, to my branding as well, to just kind of like give it more dimension. And it's like, why mute yourself down just because you want to like look professional? Like I am professional and I can make, you know, I grow businesses. I make really awesome designs that give people return on their investments and like all these things. So just because like I have a fun business name, doesn't mean, you know, same with like, Oh, like you have tattoos, like you're not professional. So it's like all of the old stereotypes that people have ingrained in like, I guess people my age where (laughs) they're like, you know, you have to do these things and dress a certain way and like, whatever. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. (laughs) And still have have clients, all business. I think people that are my clients, you know, I'm not for everybody a hundred percent, but I think the people that are my long time clients now, like they appreciate the, you know, it's like the authenticity of it. And they just feel like Mm -hmm. that is what I'm going to do for, for their brand, you know, and bring that out Mm -hmm. and kind of take out the, like, you know, the business part of it, like, okay, we do have to follow certain rules and there are brand standards and fonts, but like, let's get, you know, a little bit deeper and like, let's make it more authentic to, to you and to make it meaningful and not just like something that is going to be a placeholder essentially. So I think, yeah, branding is, is fun. And the colors are, are fun. They don't really have a meaning, but it's just to like, you know, I think they're pretty and that's another testament to owning your own business. You can do whatever you want. (laughs) (laughs) That's one of the best times. Okay. You can literally just change on a whim. So it's fun. I love it. And something you said is so important because everyone in marketing thinks, oh, in my messaging, I have to speak to my client, which totally you're here to serve this person. If you're not speaking in their language, you can't serve them, right? Mm -hmm. But I also think sometimes people forget the part of showing up as you are. There's two components, right? Like speaking to your ideal client and then being authentically who you are. Because otherwise, how can they pick who to work with if they don't know anything about you? So I like marketing to be more dimensional like that Mm -hmm. than all about the client. So I love that because I think you bring that to the table because, I mean, basically, if if you're in a in a working relationship, it's a relationship. There are two sides to this coin. So how are you showing up in that relationship? And I think for so long serving clients, I I saw this in my financial world and I talk about it with um, my female financial advisor friends, how sometimes that relationship becomes so toxic because the client is so demanding because they're so emotionally attached because you're managing their money, right? So you really have to learn how to protect yourself. But you know, it's not just financial advisors, I think for a while, it was just like always the client's always right, or the customer's always right. And the best relationships are a true relationship. And then the funny thing to me is like, I don't really want to be a demanding client because then the person serving me doesn't really like me. How good a job are they going to do for me if they don't like me? Like, this doesn't make sense to me, right? <laughs> like, I mean, that's one nice thing about owning your own business, too. You can pick who you work with, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. I've been there where it's just, you know, some clients aren't worth it. And you just, you know, at an agency before, it's like, I want to fire this person, but I literally can't. I have to. I'm forced to. And so, yeah, being able to do that. But I think the the relation, like, people want that. Everyone's asking, like, because there's so much of AI right now. They're like, aren't you scared? Or, like, are you worried about... AI taking over like design this and this and this. And I'm like, well, no, not really because people still like they crave that 
like a relationship and a human interaction. They want me to ask about their weekend versus a machine being like, here's your art or whatever, you know, and like dumping things out. They want to be able to like have a relationship with a human being and Mm -hmm. know that I actually care versus like a robot or whatever (laughs) they're saying, you know, like, or an online thing. Cause a lot of people are like, well, why can't I just order, you know, my, my merch and stuff online? Like, isn't that easier? Like, why do I go through you? Well, you know, we offer the same prices and I'm a small business. So that's number one. And then just because I offer, I care about your business and I want your business to grow because you're my client. If your business grows, my business Mm -hmm. grows. So we're in this relationship together. And so I'm going to like do everything I can to, to make this work versus like an online situation where there's no feeling there's no emotion there. Mm -hmm. There's no relationship whatsoever. Like, so I, you just kind of get counted as like a customer number. And so I think that's really, you know, important to keep, in mind in business because there's so much that is, you know, being automated and like replaced and whatever. But I think that's not going to last. I don't think because people are just going to get sick and tired of like not being able to communicate and express their feelings and their ideas about stuff and just having everything be automated. Like that's not it. No, people want connection. I agree with you. And we see these ways in different industries. So in in the financial world, you know, a lot of my clients were doing their turbo tax. And then they're like, I don't want to do my taxes anymore. I'm like, we have a great CPA we can recommend to you, right? Like everyone went the automated route. And then they're like, I don't want to do this anymore. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in the creative world with AI. But we could have a whole nother podcast on that. So we probably don't want to go down that rabbit hole. I know. Awesome. Well, Candace, I do want to honor your time. I know you have another commitment. I love to wrap up by asking, What I love about you is you have changed your life. In my opinion, I don't know if you consciously think this way, but you have changed your entire life to honor your feminine side. And that's a lot about what we talk about in the Vixen Gathering, because I feel a lot of women are operating in masculine energy all the time. You know, if you're at a big marketing agency, you're in GSD mode all the time, which is get shit done. And that's very masculine, right? And so I feel a lot of women burn out because they're not transitioning a back and forth and honoring their feminine. So when I hear your story, it's almost like your whole life has revolved to go honor your feminine. But I always like to ask all my guests, when you feel your most feminine, what are you doing? Or how do you feel? What helps you to get in the flow of femininity, which, by the way, being creative is super feminine? I think really, it's when someone like recognizes that I care you know, and they uh, acknowledge that because you're not supposed to right? in business. You're just supposed to have, have clients and like this kind of just popping off from the talk we just had about like connections and relationships. But I do care. And I, I put my whole, you know, like I'm emotional about it and I have, like, I want to make my clients happy and stuff like that. So I think seeing that as like a negative, mostly like everyone kind of wants to Mm -hmm. being a people pleaser is seen as a negative. Right. But I think that's when I feel like some people recognize that or acknowledge that and thank me for that, or, you know, going above and beyond or getting something done on a a deadline when I could have been like, no, I don't, I'm not going to do that or whatever. And like helping people out, I think is when being nurturing and stuff like that, like it's that feminine energy that you're talking about versus not caring and just doing the minimum and getting it done to get it off my plate and moving on to the next and having this like wall of like, you know, business and I don't care versus really being like, this is my life and I do care. And so I think that's when I feel like I'm most in the, in the feminine vibes is sometimes it sucks because then other people don't care. And I'm like, yeah. hell. But <laughs> when people do like acknowledge it or like thank me for things, yeah. then that's when it's like it's worth it. And I kind of am like, okay, like being myself and being female and all these things really is it's paying off versus it's not like a weakness or, you know, yeah. something that I should change. 
It's actually a superpower. So I love that. Thanks for sharing. And I think you already answered this question earlier, but if you had to put a color to your femininity, what color would it be? <laughs> Obviously pink. I would just vibe off of pink. It's always just felt like really bright. And it's not even that it's feminine because I feel like there's other colors that are also very feminine, but I think just like the color, the shade of pink that I chose for my brand is just like bold. And if there's no mistaking, it's not like kind of purpley. It's like, it's pink. Okay. So definitely uh, pink. And then I've been like vibing on chartreuse lately a lot too. I just, I think it's really pretty and it goes really well with my brand colors. So So we might have an addition. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I've been adding it in and I think like, there it's just bold bold colors and i think you you have that yeah. too where it's like those we have this discussion where it was like those the crayola packs that were yes. <laughs> the different colors outside <laughs> of the primary colors those are the good ones <laughs> Yeah, no, I love that big. I mean, I'm I'm aging myself that big crayon box. Like my grandparents had it, but we didn't have it at my house. So I was so happy to go to my big grandparents' house and get, have more color and like sharpen on the side. <laughs> like that was like I, I, totally loved it. Yeah. Now. <laughs> That's hilarious. Awesome. Well, one more thing, Candace, and then we're going to hop off. But I always like to say, I think the world needs a little more love. So if you had a quick message like that for everyone out there listening, what would you share? A oh, message? Oh, I don't want to sound too Nike, but just go okay. for it. Do it. Take the plunge. Be impulsive and just do what feels right. I think obviously there's things that you have, you know, you have to be an adult about it. You can't just do whatever you, whatever you want, whenever you want. But I think going for it is always, it's always my advice because you'll just never know otherwise. And it could be great. It could suck. And then you just move on to the next, but yeah, just, just do it. I love it. Well, Candace, thank you so much. It's a pleasure as always to talk to you. And as our parting message today, I always like to say, think about how you can show up and share love today. And inspired by Candace, what is one bold action you can take today? It might seem small, but if it's something you've been wanting to do and you're scared, just go do it today. We'd love to hear from you again. Have a fantastic day and we will talk to you soon. Thank you. (laughs) Bye. Thanks again for listening to the podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit subscribe so future episodes are automatically downloaded directly to your device. And if you want access to today's show notes, including links to all the resources we mentioned, visit VixenGathering.com slash podcast. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you next week for another episode of The Vixen Boys.